Welcome back, everybody. So today, what I want to do is talk a little bit about some housekeeping. So if you guys are regular users of Comfy UI, then this is something which is probably going to help you out. It was the same with Automatic 11.11. Over time, you would have so many extensions and you kind of need them sometimes and then they get replaced by newer ones and then you don't... And you'd end up with a bunch of sort of grandfathered in from experiments and testing and this and that. And you could keep updating forever and you could manually go through and like prune it out. But trust me, you won't know half the stuff that's actually being pulled in. I think I've got 289 gigabytes in my models folder. And it's not really checkpoints and LoRa's. It is probably mostly checkpoints and LoRa's, but I, I, you'd be surprised how much else is also in there. You know, extra bits and pieces for depth and IP adapter and all these other things. So what I want to do is introduce you to something which I call housekeeping. So every couple months, we start again. And this time, we're going to start with the new release from Comfy UI, which is the portable build. And this is nice because a lot of people struggled with the local PyTorch um, setup. Um, so you, inst you download this, it's 1.2 gigabytes, comes with everything you need. As Soon as you've uh, finished, what I would say you wanna do it does make a note of it here, config file. There is a file called extra model paths YAML. We've downloaded and unzipped the file and we look at this. So this is the command if you have an NVIDIA GPU and this is the uh, shortcut for the CPU. All right, if we go into Comfy UI, here's the model, here's the file I was talking about. If we just take a quick look at it. So there we go. As I said, commented out this part, uncommented this part, put my path in. There we go. And then we run the shortcut, which leads us to here. So now what I want to do is I want to take a look at my old Comfy UI, and then I'm going to make a shopping list of all the custom nodes. Now, First thing you want to do is you want to grab the Comfy UI Manager. That's the first one. LTDR data. Okay, and we will take the copy of that. So go into the address bar, type CMD in the custom nodes, open it up, and now you've got yourself a, a command prompt. It's in a different folder, though, so we'll go back. Right, so git clone. And we're going to clone the manager first, because that's the first thing we want. So we'll stop this. Okay, so we've got the first custom node. So now let's just run this again. And go full screen. So now what we've got is we've got that from the previous video, this complex. Oh, no, 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 no. I tell a lie. This is my latest workflow which is due for release there'll be a video coming up next explaining what it is here's a bunch of test prompts for everybody so i'm going to go ahead and uh, get all this installed so we're going to open up the manager and we're going to go to missing custom nodes and we're going to start install okay so it took a little bit of a struggle but we got there in the end so you would be just installing all of your custom nodes in the manager however i migrated mine so i copied mine from the old install into the new one which obviously means that none of them were installed so i'm going to quickly show you how you do that what you do is you open up the manager and there's a couple of things. So the first, after you migrate, so you've installed everything and obviously you can use the uh, YAML file, but I think this is cleaner because some stuff still gets downloaded. So when you have to install, so you end up with it in two places. So it wasn't clean, but basically if you've got high speed internet and a big hard drive, you probably don't care. But if you're trying to save on bandwidth, you can 
copy everything from your old install so in fact cut and paste and that if it's on the same drive it will instantly move so go to the old installation location and my folders are missing because i've already taken them away and you take models and you take custom nodes and you cut and you paste i also took the folder checkpoints because it seems that some things were being put there by those mod authors i don't know why bottom line once they're there, you open it up and it will give you a whole bunch of stuff saying problems, problems. So what you would do first, obviously you want to update. Uh, I'd say I did update all, then update comfy, then fetch updates with a restart in between each. And it was giving me all kinds of um, weird errors. So what I did was I opened up my system variables. I think you can just type variable bar. And then you go into environment variables and then you go to edit under system variables and then no not that one scroll down uh scroll down to path there it is edit we get this open and what i did was i added my path to the python embedded scripts so i'll just show you that location real quick so if we go back one from comfy into python embedded and into scripts click there and you can copy it um so yeah i added that um and then it stopped complaining a lot in the logs because obviously it could actually see things correctly which is nice so i did that um and then there was an issue with insight face uh well let's look, not get ahead of ourselves here so once i'd done this the, the custom nodes requirements hadn't been run and there's like 40 custom nodes I use so I didn't really want to go through and do that manually but luckily this will do it for you so I, I went into first not missing custom nodes but install custom nodes and then I went into import failed which is where they all were and it gives you the option to try update no to, to update try fix and uninstall where there were conflicts, because I did have a couple of old funky nodes, I clicked uninstall because I didn't need them anymore. And the rest of them, I clicked uh, fix. I clicked fix on all of them and then restarted. And uh, then there was two left that wouldn't, didn't want to go through. And I think what I did was I did the update and I did the fix and install custom nodes. And then after that, there was just one left. That's right. And it was reactor. And it, uh, this is the fix. So I will include a link to this in the description for the video. But essentially, when you scroll down past this guy who is really having the pain, um, it actually linked us to a... Oh, I'll just link to here. I'll link to the solution. Much easier. So yeah, I'll link to this bit. This is the solution. So it's actually uh, quite useful because this is teaching you something important here. So if we are, if we want to do something custom with our comfy portable, we can't just do it like we used to with system. Okay. And this is how you do it. So what you have to do is you have to run stuff from there with that, basically. And the only place you can run that from is that folder I just showed you, this folder here. So what you do is you go into a terminal from here. Okay, not inside Comfy. This is the root of Portable. Yeah, it's got Comfy inside it and there's the Python embed. So what you want to do, oh, and then also as well, Comfy uh, Portable currently runs on Python, uh, Python 3.11. Okay, so previously a lot of people were still using 3.10. So that means that the version of the build of Insight Face is completely different. So that means download that, the link's right here. Um, and then it's only like, it's less than a megabyte, I think. It was really small. And then what you do is you place it in the directory, as you can see, I've got it right here. There's Insight Face, yeah. A lot of people were asking about this, so I'm glad this is easy to fix. But what I do is I take 
uh, I, I, well, for where, and whenever I'm doing this, I'll copy the file name, type the bit I need to type, and then copy the file name in. Luckily, these guys have given us the whole thing. So I remember what I said, that being run from here. So from Comfy UI Windows Portable, not Comfy UI inside it, but from its root, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically use its Python embedded python.exe dash v. So we're going to use the embedded Python, not the system Python, to run this. All right. So I've already done it. But you would just put it in like that and run it. Enter. Okay. After I'd done that, everything's working again. I've even got Woznodes back, which is really cool. Um because <laughs> one thing I think we looked at quite an advanced workflow uh, recently so I'm just going to open that up now see how it looks all right so we've got some missing nodes so we'll go to install missing nodes missing was ah okay so I didn't actually have that yet I don't know if it works then okay so let's fix that Okay, let's give it a look now. There we go. And let's see what that mystery was. Okay, so let's open her up. So this was the mystery from the previous episode. So this was what that fancy was node was that I replaced with a basic node. I mean, I don't know. It looks like it's, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff here, but it's not, I don't think it would have broken it. So it's interesting he's not using that because it looks like that is a video output and this is going to be producing a buttload of images. Maybe the idea is you assemble the frames afterwards, which is probably more memory efficient just to process each frame and uh, do it like that. But, oh, wait, hang on. Okay, so you still get the outputs go through the bypass. So this isn't turned off. It's just not doing anything. So whatever goes in here is going to go doodle -doo 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 and just come straight through. So this is the part that saves the video. Right. Um, video helper suite, yeah. Okay, right. Well, basically, all I wanted to show you in this video was the whole process of getting yourself uh set up so that you can just because the thing is once you know how to build a clean comfy um it's pretty easy to just you know because like i said i the reason i couldn't update my was nodes was because my python was out of was too old i believe i believe i i, I don't really i'm not too bothered uh the, the point about the cause the point is is fixed I was on 3.10, I'm now on 3.11. The the Torch version changed. To be honest, loads of stuff has changed because now we're on Torch 2.2, I believe. So I was happy to get the latest, you know, the newer version of Torch at the same time. So, you know, it's all upsides. It's going to be quicker. It's going to be more, well, I don't know about the quality, but it'll be definitely quicker. Uh, just to give you a rough idea before I disappear, if I just take a look at what I've got installed, we have a lot on here now. So it's totally fine. It's perfectly stable. Everything I was running in the November build that had been updated to today um, is installed and actually works now, whereas some things were starting to not work. So if you're starting to see that you can't get your nodes to import, I don't know, can I actually show you anything here? So let's see, we started off there we go, fixing. So we started off with pip install. Sorry, I was in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. Pip in, Python, pip in, there we go. There it is. And then we've updated that. Then we've done the install of the insight face. It's gone through all of the installation of the insight face. Like I said, I did quite a lot. Um, and then I forgot to type dot slash. <laughs> 
uh, or no, I wasn't in the right folder. I don't know. Off it goes. Starts up. And I believe it should show that one of these nodes broke. Nope, that was on the previous run. So, yeah. Oh, no, here we go. So, yeah. Start up. So this is after I've told it to do the, yeah, I told it to do the uh, try update. So when we took a look at installing Wasnodes just now, it did everything I needed to do here. So in the next video, we're taking a look at the updated Ananke workflow for SDXL. And uh, then I'm going to work on the Cascade version. So thanks for watching. See you next time.